Welcome to the Southampton International Boat Show 2021. Now the boat behind me needs little introduction. It is the Arcona 435, a beautiful handcrafted performance cruiser from Sweden. Let's go inside, take a look and see what we think. Welcome to the helm station of the Arcona 435. Now this really is a performance cruiser. We have electric winch controls, we have adjustable chart plotters and carbon wheels. But look at these pedestals, everything is really quite stripped back. There are stainless steel grab rails, there's an adjustment point for the plotter, but that's it. Everything else is designed to give you the space for you and your crew to get the most out of the boat. The starboard side helm is identical to port, there are windless foot controls there, recessed engine controls and again everything is open and clear, however this is a fairly exposed helm. So again on long ocean passages you are going to be wet if the weather is bad. The other thing that gives away the performance cruising pedigree of this boat is this large open transom large and flat you are going to get more performance out of this boat but again drop your binoculars and they are going in the drink i am not a fan of open transoms on big ocean going boats but everything is wide and flat and well labeled instruments above the companionway as with ruby rose actually designed to give clear readouts from the helm or from crew clutches and lines very very well laid out this is going to be a pretty easy boat to sail either shorthanded or with your full racing crew Again, another nod to the performance pedigree of this boat, a central traveler that bisects the cockpit. And yet a further nod to the performance pedigree of this boat, the cockpit table is recessed into the sole, thus giving crew a good bracing point, but also keeping the cockpit clear. Side decks, storage bins, this boat is clearly made for the performance end of the market. And you can see that the clever use of space to add storage bins for lines means that when you have a big crew on board, everything is going to be neat. You are not going to have the rat's nest of lines that we used to have on a big day when we were sailing. And again, a lot of space in this cockpit, clear side decks, captive lines. This is a German main sheet system. So you've got main sheets on both sides, much like in Ruby Rose. And finally, as we move forward, we have those large Genoa tracks, so you are going to get the best sheeting angle for that overlapping head sail. The coach roof has two large opening hatches, and as you know, I'm a great fan of the flush mounted hatch, so everything is going to be flush down there, so well done Arcona for embracing modern technology there. Moving forward to the bow of the boat, now everything, the deck here is laid in artificial teak and I'm a great fan of this stuff. It is very, very hard wearing, very low maintenance and very sustainable. Flush mounted hatches again over the master cabin and again everything, the quality of everything here is absolutely superb. So you can really see the detail that has gone in to designing small features of this boat. It is a very, very pretty boat. And so we head to the bow and let's just start off with some statistics on the Arcona 435. Length 13.2 meters, beam 4 meters and a draft of up to 3 meters. Now bear in mind this boat weighs 9,000 kilos. This is lighter than Ruby Rose was. She is 5 foot longer and has the same beam. So compared to Ruby Rose, she is slimmer, a little bit lighter and she's going to be a lot faster. As we move to the stem head, you can see that large fixed bowsprit, so no problems with asymmetrics. But let us talk about tankage. 300 litres of water, Ruby Rose had about the same. Diesel 180 litres, Ruby Rose had 225. I personally would want more for a dedicated liverpool, irrespective of whether you had water maker or not. Moving back down those side decks again, just look at the quality of all the fitments here. Everything is finished really immaculately. And as you would expect from a 43 foot ocean going vessel, attachment point for a stay sail. So you can run this as a cutter rig if that's what you desire. Handrails moving forward, which obviously I always like a continuous handrail. And now let's talk about the rig. Now, obviously all these boats can be specified with carbon rigged. This model had the aluminium rig. 
but let's talk about Airdraft. She has a really tall rig. The Airdraft on the Arcona 435, again, 21 meters. That is 68 foot. Unfortunately, you're not gonna get that through the ICW. And the obligatory mast boot here, this is a keel stepped boat. So again, you are not gonna have a compression post inside, but the mast running all the way through to the keel. And again, as we move aft and look through the spray hood and look into the cockpit, you really do get a sense of how wide and open this cockpit is. This really does have a performance pedigree and it is apparent across the boat from stem head to transom. Now let's take a walk down the companionway steps into the Arcona 435 and see what we think of the interior. Absolutely stunning. There is a lot of natural light here. This is all fitted out in teak with a white Corian surface and there are bespoke options for your fabric. But it is still very boaty, very traditional. And if you like the Scandinavian look of these yachts, then this is going to be right up your alley. Again, looking at the saloon table, this all folds out so you would easily get dining for eight people here. The quality of the wood finish is absolutely superb. There is lots of stowage, there is lots of light, and again, this would be a very, very comfortable place to live. Another thing we always assess is how much practical stowage is there. There are lockers on both port and starboard side of the saloon. There is stowage under the cockpit table and there is stowage under all the benches. So again, as liverboards, if this is what you intend to purchase for your liverboard boat, there is going to be lots of stowage. Looking at the galley, this is on the port hand side, very similar to Ruby Rose. So you have a gimbaled three burner cooker. You have both a fridge and a freezer here. And again, there are really nice covers for the sink. So you have a very large work surface area if that's what you need. Also nice little touches like those splash guards to stop you spoiling your upholstery. Another thing to note is the amount of storage options here. There are lots of drawers, lots of storage space for pantry items. So again, if this is a potential liverboard for you, I don't think there's going to be any problem in keeping this as a functional galley that does have practical applications, both while at sea or at anchor. Also, just to finish the saloon off, there is this beautiful teak and Hollywood flooring that I absolutely love. It really does make a boat look very, very beautiful. Moving forward into the master cabin, again, everything super high quality. The master berth is wide. However, one gripe I do have is it is very, very tapered, and that is obviously dictated by the shape of the hull. However, as a liverboard, this essentially means is you are going to have to sleep with your feet towards the anchor locker. That is something that personally I do not like. But moving forward, honestly, the quality of the finish here is superb. I am absolutely in love with the way this boat looks with the dark teak wood, the offset gray upholstery and these white panels, they really do add a sense of light and space to the boat. So it is a very, very beautiful and light area. And this is a absolute performance cruiser. So, you know, cruising at 10 knots is not going to be a problem. Adjacent to the master cabin, we have the heads. I would have liked to have seen a separate shower store here. However, there is the facility for a shower curtain. But again, in a 43 foot boat, I would have expected um, some sort of separation there. The guest heads aft and just in front of the starboard side cabin. Again, fully functional, but again, there is no separate shower store here. And we are talking about a liverboard boat. So again, something I would have loved to have seen. But moving back through the saloon, let's have a chat about the chart table. Now this really well designed, a large chart table, large enough to take a full size chart. There's a well laid out instrument panel as well as easy access to the VHF lighting controls and generator. There is a large comfortable navigator seat. However, I would have liked to have seen some bracing points. Navigating in inclement weather, you do really need to be able to hang on. However, the visibility from the navigator seat is absolutely phenomenal. And again, I always like to be able to see out of um, a port light or a hatch when navigating because being down in rough weather for prolonged periods of time is not pleasant. And aft under the cockpit sole, we have two double cabins. 
Standard arrangement for boats like this, you have cabinetry against the uh, outboard hull. And again, part of the berth is underneath the cockpit sole. So there isn't as much light as you would hope to find. But again, everything's super high quality and there is a lovely space for guests, crew or children. And finally, let's raise those companionway steps and take a look at the engine here. Now, the standard engine in the Arcona 435 is a 56 horsepower Yanmar. Everything seems easily accessible, although the space around the engine is very, very limited. However, filtration and the water pump are easily accessible for your routine maintenance. So again, not going to be a problem like it was on Ruby Rose. And as we swing past the companionway steps to take a look at the guest cabin on the port side, let's talk about price. The base price for the Arcona 435 is half a million US dollars plus local taxes. And while I absolutely love the boat and think it's probably really good value for money, features like that big open transom, the stripped out cockpit and the smaller amount of living space than we had on Ruby Rose means that for us personally, if we were looking for another monohull, this wouldn't quite fit the bill. However, if you are looking for a fast, safe passage across the Atlantic, then this is going to be possibly top of your list. So the Arcona 435, what did we think of this boat? Well, absolutely loved her. She is Scandinavian design, super well built, performance cruiser. So you're going to get scintillating performance in a luxury boat. So absolutely amazing. We really love this boat, you know, deep keeled, kind of like super well built. Yeah, a fantastic piece of kit. So that was the Arcona 435. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It's again, it's a little take on what we think of what is on, available on the market for couples or young families or small families to sell around the world. So the Arcona 435. If you enjoyed this, give us a like, give us a thumbs up, and we'll be back again with more videos detailing our lives, but also what we find on the yacht market. So I hope you enjoyed this. Goodbye.